Once again, the start of the second half. Tony Carbignani back on the field for Memphis as Stan Stamekovic in midfield now. Number 10 holds the ball. He's going. There he goes inside. He's turning. <laughs> Very uh, high, I guess what you call a high risk type of play, much like Babe Ruth. A lot of strikeouts, but uh, also a lot of home runs. And he, the unfortunate thing is he pays a price every time he does that because the defenders get frustrated not being able to get the ball. And if they can't get the ball, they're going to get a piece of the leg. And a tripping call against Henry Sosnicha. So we'll have free kick for Cleveland at halftime. It's Buffalo 3, New York 2. The Americans needing to catch up over both those teams to get in the playoff spot. Nice pass out by Helmut Dudek. Cleared back in by Radovich of Cleveland. A little change in the lineup for Horse Bertles. Uh, Tony Carbignani has now replaced Mike Garrett on the first line, and Henry Sosnika for Steve Allison. I guess uh, when you give up four goals, you got to put a little different flavor in there and see if that can turn the trick. Got an all-foreign first team now for Memphis. The Americans, despite the fact that over half their team are Native Americans, most of their stars are foreign players. And when you say the names like Dudek and Stamekovic and Kunovats, great stars in their own countries, but it's a little bit deceptive because the Americans do possess. That's going to get up two minutes. Two minute penalty for intentional handball against Ray Kunovats. And we'll now see how good Cleveland is in their man advantage situation. A bad mental mistake by Ray Kunovats in outdoor soccer. He would not be sending in the penalty box because there is no penalty box. And all the referee can do is give you a little tongue lashing and perhaps a warning. And I would guess that may be a carryover. It may happen from outdoor soccer. Yeah, a very stupid penalty at this point in the game. Uh, we're down 4-2. to two. We're just trying to get our rhythm back. Uh, loss of concentration on Kuno's part. But uh, hopefully we're not going to pay for it. This will be the first time we see on the field uh, George Nanshoff. Again, a uh, very good player, very experienced in the MISL and NASL, and a good th scoring threat for Cleveland. Dudek, one of the top shorthanded goal scorers in the league with three, set an MISL, or Memphis American record, I should say, with three shorthanded goals. In man advantage, Cleveland, not fourth, and in penalty killing, Memphis, about seventh. They have a great deal of patience. As Manchoff scores, that's goal. As you said, Chris, the first time George Manchoff comes on the field, and just 35 seconds into his first opportunity to show something, scores an open net goal. One shot, one goal. Helmut Dudek uh, making the same mistake we spoke about with Keith Burphy. We'll see a different angle of it right now, but Trevor Dawkins just slides it across the goal. George Nanshoff off the post. All he has to do is tip it in. You have to be aware in indoor soccer what's going on behind you. You cannot watch the ball. You have to know what's going on in the immediate area. Right there, Helmut Duda took his eyes off George Nanshoff. George slips behind him, and it's 5-2. to two. Very costly penalty. And, and so the intentional goal, intentional handball to Ray Kunovats. And now the Americans in the forest have switched off on man advantage goals. And we've got still a three goal margin that the Americans need to come back from. Rudruff with the steal. Three on two for the Americans. Holtenbein makes a pass inside to Garrett, across to Long. Almost an opportunity to head the ball, Chris. A little dangerous. Michael Graham had his uh, foot right up there. I think Stevie did well just to get a foot on it. Because Gaham right there in that position had the best positioning on the ball. Clearance by Matt O'Sullivan, his first time on the field today, I believe, Chris. Yep. O'Sullivan, the All-American and member of the U.S. Olympic team from California State University at Chico. Commonly known as El Chico State. <laughs> <laughs> that Mexican university. Yeah. Another deflection, Steve Long. Bruce Rudolph put some pressure on. And now there's Chris Vaccaro, the ball bounces. There, it's okay. Richard Booth maintains his position, came out to cut off the angle, and Chris Bartels as a coach of goalkeepers many times, I'm sure that that's something that all, every goalkeeper is taught to come out and try to cut down the freedom. 
Well, you have to, otherwise you're at the mercy of the shooter. And right there, Vic Davidson got behind the defense. Well, I think we're gonna see again, maybe. Well, we're gonna take a break with that as the Americans will have a corner kick and we'll be back with more after this. Richfield Coliseum, a corner kick for the Memphis Americans. Woodruff, back to Michael Garrett. He'll get it across to O'Sullivan. Sullivan now looking for Holzenbein inside. He gets it to Steve Long. And Trevor Dawkins, as Steve Long has hit his face against the boards, he's back up looking for a little bit of a foul. Stolen for a moment. And a little bit of high pressure being put on by Memphis now. Inside to Long, a little bit too far by Garrett. Good pressure being put on by the Americans right now. And I think you see this is typical of American players per se, having come through the college ball system where everything is tight, everything is fast, everything is man to man. I think they can do an effective job of trying to hem Cleveland in. Holton Bine trying to head the ball into the corner to Long. Long. And Trevor Dawkins go into it. Dawkins, the captain of this Cleveland Force team. And on the fly, as the Americans try to switch players, Nick Davidson gets open. Here comes Rodriguez to the far side, but in a little overlap. Not very dangerous. Richard Duke pulls the ball back in with his foot. Been seen a lot of Stevie Long, and he wanted us to say hello to his wife, Eva, and their beautiful daughter, Cherith, who went to her first soccer game. Rick. That's right. She's really a big fan now. All of about a month old. <laughs> There's Stan on the ball. Gets it up to Dudek. That's really not the best place for Stan to show his skill. Back in the defensive zone. You can see he's got several players watching him and no one really wants to go after him. There's the pass inside to Carbagnani and pushing off the ball, but no foul called. Here's Hoscovy. Hoscovy with the chip. Kunovats makes a nice run up to Soznicha. Cleveland again and putting the pressure on, keeping us There's our final zone. score, a big upset as Memphis State has beaten Georgetown. And the aircraft carrier has succumbed to the wiles of Keith Lee. Memphis State, I believe, is going to be playing Houston next. And congratulations to the Tigers and uh, also to all those who, who you have been watching the Tigers-Georgetown game. Glad to have you by at the score at the moment. Cleveland 5, Memphis 2, a long ways to go in the second half. 8.35 left. And let's see if we can get two big victories for Memphis today. Ty Hoskaby now for Cleveland inside off the boards. Tremendous pass to Bert to Craig Allen. And Craig Allen with his head down as he now knows he had a great opportunity. We will have a corner kick, so we'll stay with it. That last run by the Amer I mean by Cleveland just demonstrated two of the things that they do very well. One is that they come down as quickly as possible. Their transition from defense to offense is very quick. They try to move the ball down into the offensive zone as quickly as possible. And then they use the boards effectively. Again, the ball played off just beyond the goalpost out center. And Craig Allen missed a beautiful opportunity. There's Steve Long, the roadrunner. But Kaham gets back, and as Chris told you, two speedsters. Very difficult to run as fast with the ball as it is without it, and the plus means for the defender, he almost always has the advantage. Nice tackle by Matt O'Sullivan from behind. O'Sullivan now. The Americans have a break as Holtenbein did not get a great pass. Oh, deflection by Trevor Dawkins. And Chris Vaccaro almost midair had to turn a backflip to get to that deflection. Nothing more than a goalkeeper hates than having somebody deflect the ball, whether it's your offensive man or defensive man, because that changes the complete direction of the ball. And as fast as it's coming, and with the kind of spin that Holtz puts on it, it becomes very difficult for them to handle. Things opening up a little bit more. Here comes Garrett, now up to Stevie Long. Long back to Holtzenbein. 
Holton Bond moving up. No one moving on him. He'll hit it. Shows you how <laughs> good I am at predicting. No longer will you be known as a yes. prophet. <laughs> Keith Furphy. And here comes Charlie George. Charlie Green, I should say. be a kick in now for Cleveland. With that, we're going to take another timeout. We'll be back after this commercial timeout. For Cleveland, and another score third quarter update. Buffalo 5, New York 4. We really want both those teams to lose, yeah, Chris. I'm, I'm trying to figure <laughs> out how we can manage that. Well, someone else will have a addition to their loss column. The Americans need to worry about is getting one in the win column. Steal now by Davidson. And Steve Long. Charlie Green. He'll kick. Here's Long. He's got a little bit of space. There's a shot. Deflection by Vaccaro. To the far post. That's a very difficult pass and dangerous pass across the penalty area. Made by Keith Furphy, and now here comes Vic Davidson for Cleveland. To Furphy, left foot. Blocked by Bruce Rudruff. Furphy again. Left foot, shot, blocked by Bruce Rudruff. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Michael Garrett, very high level of skill. The Americans' number one draft choice from George Mason University last year. Steps over the ball. There's a nice pass by O'Sullivan. Cross, and Tony Carbignani trying to make the pass to Stamekovic. Carbignani racing back. Give the numerical advantage to Memphis. High kick by O'Sullivan. Carbignani, the Americans on the, on the fly trying to switch lines. Get the rest of their number one line back on the field. Here's Richard Boot. He cannot pick up the ball with his hands once he has done so once with the ball in his zone. Cleveland doing a great job right now of keeping us hemmed in. Kuno to Stan. Just a little bit too far. Stamenkovic just off the tip of his right big toe. We could see it all the way from here. <laughs> Very close. Bernie James now, the MISL leader in block shots. And here's Kunovac looking for his compadre Stamekovic. There's Stan. He's got nobody one against one. There he's his turn inside. Get ready to say, Stan needs to pass off. You saw the magician at halftime when he beat four of the best players in the major indoor soccer league single-handedly. Look again, here he is, Radovic, who's done a good job against him all day. He turns with a flick of his left foot. Stamekovic has brought the margin to two. Here's another margin. Look how well he uses his hands on elbows to hold off a little bit. There's the right hand, the elbow. He'll turn, he'll get inside very quickly. And he has a pretty quick trigger too, Chris. Right. He has no wind up on his shot, so the goaltender has no idea when the shot is gonna come. The big difference there was only Bronco Radovic was back on stand while the other defenders laying off. Effectively in the first half, they stayed two to three men on him, which cut down his space. Anytime Stan has one man like Bronco in a one-on-one -on -one situation, a good deal of time, that poor defender is going to get burnt. And he took him for a ride right then. So Stan Stamekovic, his 53rd goal on the year. As you know, only the fourth player in MISL history to score over 100 points in a season. The Americans still have a lot of games to play, and Stan is well over the 100-point mark already. Kaskovi controls the ball very well. Difficult ball, Chris, coming down directly overhead to get a hold of. Nice play by Carbignani as he comes back to clear the ball out. There's one difficult thing right there as Stan is unable to come back, and it really does allow almost a man advantage situation for 
teams. Allen beats him. Deflection by Kunovac, a nice play as the Americans under a lot of pressure now. At the All the way time, back. I was going to say, Kyle, at the same time, what Cleveland gets <laughs> has problems with is they get everybody pushed up into the offensive zone, and they start getting lazy on coming back, and that's uh, in the past at the Mid-South Coliseum when we scored 13 goals. That's exactly what happened. They got so many people caught up in the offensive zone that nobody could get back in time defensively. Nice shot on the far side by Rodriguez. With just wide boot, had it measured, but was unable, unable to get anything on it. Inside Rodriguez again, Richard Boot, great save as he came out and was able to smother the ball. Carbagnani on the right side. Here comes Kunovac looking for Stan. Stan's got it. He's turned inside. Stamekovic, oh! Almost another goal by Stamekovic as he had three players down on the ground, hit the far post. And Stamekovic wanting some help from the referees. He's not getting it. Meanwhile, on the far end, Dudek, the right shoulder made that save for Richard Boot. And I guess, Chris, that's the importance of keeping your shoulder square. Oh, for sure, especially indoor soccer. The ball is coming so fast and so close that you just have to stay square. It's not a, it's not a position for anybody who's a little bit gun shot. Stan that time, I believe, trying to loft the ball over the goalkeeper Chris Vaccaro, who was out near the edge of his penalty area. And Stan does not have a tearaway jersey, but uh, probably should. I thought he was talking about his tailor. <laughs> <laughs> Holding against Cleveland. Free kick for Memphis. Inside the Garrett, they've got a perhaps two on one as Dudek was wide open on the far side. Garrett with the shot. Goal, Garrett from Stamekovic. Very nice. Slowly, the Memphis Americans, who refuse to give up, keep coming back. Take a look again. Garrett gets it to Stamekovic. Stamekovic with Dudek on the far side holds. And Michael Garrett winds up, splits two Cleveland defenders, and beats goalkeeper Chris Vaccaro. 148 left in the third. It's Cleveland five, the Americans four. There's the shot by Michael Garrett. Cleveland, the uh, second half, we were saying how disciplined they were in the second quarter, maintaining pressure on the Americans. They seem to be letting up a little. They've gotten a, they had a three-goal lead. They've relaxed a little right then. They gave Mike Garrett too much room, concentrating on Stan. Holtenbein with the shot. Knuckleball that thing. time. Fourth goal of the year for Michael Garrett from Stamenkovic. And it's got the Cleveland Force fans riled up. Sounds almost like their rendition of Let's Go Blue. In fact, it is, which is exactly what the Americans fans say at the Mid-South Coliseum. Holtenbein to Long. Inside, off the post. No one was there. Garrett loses the ball to Charlie Green. Here comes Green, the pass. Nick Davidson turns inside to Furphy. Off the crossbar. Another shot by Davidson. How quickly things happen, the transition. The Americans trying to score on the other end of the field. A quick steal by Cleveland, and they're battering the Americans' goal. Very dangerous. Extremely unfortunate. What a crazy bounce, but you have to give credit to Keith Murphy Kaham. It'll hit the top of the boards, deflect crazily behind. The Americans had the deflection covered, had it gone off the boards very easily. Let's take another look again. You'll see at least two American players there. There's O'Sullivan and Rudruff. And Holton Biden behind him, but Keith Furphy does a very nice job with the side volley. For Furphy, his second goal in the night, his 43rd on the season. Okay, watching that goal, you can tell the Cleveland Force is a well-trained team as far as indoor soccer. The angle at which Michael Kaham took that shot, or let's say that pass off the boards, wasn't even close to the goal, but the carry that he got around the glass was unbelievable. Keith Murphy anticipating it, making a nice run. There's nothing Richard Boot could do on that goal. That was a finely executed goal. A lot of pressure again being put on as Carbagnani is waiting up on the far end. 
Garbagnani just hoping with the pass. Stamekovic has it. Can Garbagnani shoot two seconds? One. That's it for the third quarter. Well, for the Americans, two goals for Memphis, two goals for Cleveland. We're getting ready for the final 15. Reminder that just a little over 48 hours from now, Tuesday night, Buffalo Stallions come to town. It'll be painter cap night. First 1,300 people coming to the game, getting painter caps. That will all start at 6.30. The roundup party for the Buffalo Stallions beginning at 6 in the parking lot. I have some live TV coverage as well as uh, a lot of music and fun. So join at 6 o'clock this Tuesday night at the parking lot just off Southern Avenue in Memphis, Tennessee for the Buffalo Stallions and the Memphis Americans. Game time, 7.30. Tickets at Ticketmaster locations and, of course, there at the Coliseum. Also like to remind you that coming up a week from Friday, April the 1st, Polaroid Super D night. And uh, starting next weekend, be sure to stop by Super D drugstore in your area and pick up information on that special Polaroid Super D promotion that could qualify you and get you two free tickets to the Americans game that night on April the 1st. Also coming up this Friday, we have the big Pontiac night with Richard Petty and his son Kyle being in attendance and all the Petty cars halftime that night give you a chance to personally inspect all that's coming up this season with Pontiac and also a chance to look at the pace car from Daytona and Richard Petty's race car in person, coming up this Friday night, game time, 7.30. Cleveland, two-goal margin. As we start the final 15 minutes, Rodriguez to Hoscovy. High skill, Hoscovy, the goal! I told you, Kai Hoskovy, tremendous skill, very strong. Going against the Americans' all-star defender, Helmut Dudek, steps over the ball. Makes a nice little fake. Watch him step over it with his right foot. He'll try to get, there's the step over, to the left, one touch, high shot underneath the crossbar. Richard Boot beaten. So even with that step over, it not only sold Helmut Dudek, but it sold Richard Boot. As he was back on his heels, making the transition from one, one side of the goal to the other. And look, you don't expect for a player like Oscar too to shoot it high. Most of the shots are gonna come low on you. And I, already Richard was making an, anticipating and going low. Beautiful shot by Oscar And that's not the first time he's done that this year. Oscar his 33rd goal in the season. Six players, I believe. Chris, for Cleveland, over 30 points on the season. Very well balanced scoring approach. Very impressive team uh, scoring wise, as we talked about before. Over 1,035 points accumulated by just six players in their MISL career. So you're talking a lot of firepower. And that's why it's been so surprising that the Americans have been able to defeat Cleveland twice this year by just uh, incredible scores 13 7 in Memphis and I believe 4 3 in overtime here. In overtime, February 24th. Reflection, the ball has gone out of play. With that, we're going to take a little break, and we'll get back with you after this timeout for more Memphis American Soccer live on TV5, WMC-TV, Memphis. We're back, and Tony Carbonelli getting ready to take the kick in for Memphis. He tries to find Helmut Dudek in midfield. Dudek is there, gets pushed off the ball by Kahan for Cleveland. So as Nietzsche should be there for Memphis, he does. Let's the ball go back to, to Richard Boot. Boot up to Carbignani. And two Cleveland players collapse. Very difficult to beat any two players. Well, Memphis has now got to run with Cleveland. Cleveland's done a great job, as we said, of moving the ball up quickly upfield. Memphis has now got to work a little harder on getting up quicker. There's only 13 minutes remaining. What a shot by Dudek. Dudek hitting another sinker. I believe Vaccaro got a hand on it to knock it against the post. It rebounded to Stan Stamekovic's head. And just before he had a chance to head the ball into the goal, Cleveland defenders kicking the ball up. So we'll have a corner kick. Very dangerous now for Memphis. They've got a good chance here. There's Stan on the ball. Stan again. In the corner, Kunovats. 
to Stan. Stan loses his shoe into the corner. And Keith Murphy cleaning his shoe off for Stan Stamikovic. Has a lot of respect for Stan. <laughs> A lot of players would love to have that skill that Stan Stamikovich has. Also, if you'd like to get information on how you can become a part of the Memphis Americans Gallery, be sure to call the Americans office at 7113 as we take a look at Billy Mitchell. There he is, uh, backup goalkeeper today, though he's seen a lot of action this season. Graduate of the University of Alabama. Huntsville. Don't Huntsville, forget to yes. that. Wild Bill Michelow. He'll be there for the roundup Tuesday night. There's a nice steal by Stevie Dorr. Just Allison Holzenbein. Holzenbein looking. O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan scored consecutive goals in the Americans' first three games this season. They said he was going to take over the scoring championship from Zungle this year. Well, very unusual as uh, more of a destroyer kind of defender. But he does have a lot of skill and enjoys tacking from behind. <laughs> that time took down Charlie Green. Woodruff to O'Sullivan. Up to Steve Long. Tries to turn on it. Knocked down by Trevor Dawkins. And a steal by Rudruff. Steal by Rudruff again. Steve Long, one against three. What's he going to do? He sort of lost the handle right there. Usually Steve Long keeps the ball right under his feet. I think there's uh, showing a little bit of fatigue on Stevie's face. He's done a lot of work today. And a lot of that work when you do high effort uh, is not recognized or appreciated. Dick Davidson now for Cleveland. Americans back in town Tuesday night against Buffalo. There's a shot. Nice play by Richard Boot. As he was screened, and at the last moment, Richard Boot up again, heads it out. Lost, uh, did not know where he was. Left foot, shot. Keith Murphy. There's a shot. It'll be a goal kick for Memphis. We're going to take another break. 10.50 left in the fourth. It's the Cleveland 4-7, the Americans 4. You'll be the leader of the pack. Pontiac got out front by joining the Pontiac Pack and your Memphis Americans on March 25th in welcoming Richard and Kyle Petty, second and third generation NASCAR champions, and the exciting Petty car to the Mid-South Coliseum. See the Daytona 500 pace car, too, plus the spectacular Pontiac tour display. And it all happens March 25th when your Memphis Americans play the New York Arrows, 7.30 in the Mid-South Coliseum. Be there! <laughs> Just reminders, we get ready for the goal kick for Memphis, and if you want to be a world record holder, you can sign up for the American Soccer Showcase coming up the weekend of April 1st and the 2nd. And the Americans will put on about a 36-hour marathon with as many as 60 teams, and if you're playing on a soccer team in the Memphis area, men, women, or youth team, call the Americans' office and get information on how you can take part and uh, become a world record holder. Indoor soccer at the Mid-South Coliseum. Blocked there by Radovich. Radovich going one against one all night long against Demekovic. Or stand one goal, one assist on the night. Out of Sosnicha. Sosnicha, first year with the Memphis Americans. And native of Poland, Carbignani, Argentinian. Really, though, he's a Memphis American, and he's been with the Rogues and been living in Memphis for at least four years. Kunovats now. Richard Boot is going to move up towards the red line, try to draw a Cleveland defender towards him. Here's Kunovats. You notice on your screen what's happening right now is they're keeping us within half field. Uh, we've got nobody deep, which is giving uh, Cleveland the opportunity to pull everybody up into the attack and keep us closed in. That's going to be the shot. Deflection by Boot. Nice header back by Sosnicha. Looking for Stan. Here's Sosnicha. 
Plays it to Stan. Stan's one against one, one against two. Now one against three as they call a foul <laughs> against Cleveland. Let's take a look, if we can, at the leading scores in the Major Indoor Soccer League. Stan Stamekovic being number one. You see him. 52 goals, 61 assists, 113 points. He's added his 53rd goal tonight. 62nd assist now at 115 points. Steve Jungle, the all-time leading scorer in the Major Indoor Soccer League, so far behind. 27 points, it looks like. And Stan Zerlecki, last year's third leading scorer, second leading scorer in the Major Indoor Soccer League from the Pittsburgh Spirit in third. One reason, and then you see the final three. Two Chicago players and Julie V from San Diego. So Stan Stamekovic, clearly the league's leading scorer. And the first player to upset Steve Jungle, if Stan can stay healthy, in the MISL scoring race. Steal by Radovich. Stan stays on the ground. Chris looked like a good steal. Oh, beautiful steal, yeah. But Stan got his weight leaning the wrong way, unfortunately, and uh, didn't have complete control of the ball. But uh, Bronco Radovich plays him very well. I mean, he sticks in there, just seems to get a toe poke on it. And, and that's now, all you need. New player on Stan. There's a nice pass inside. Oh, great pass by Carbignani. Kunabats on the far side. Holding against Cleveland. No one's inside the box. Stan waiting. 6-4, Buffalo over New York in the fourth. Carbignani, the shot deflected by Vaccaro. Here's Helmut Dudek trying to hold on to the ball against the boards. Back to Carbignani. This is not a man advantage situation, but Memphis putting a lot of pressure on. And now Cleveland, all the way back in their own defensive zone, is able to corral the ball. Stamekovic looks pretty tired, Chris. Oh, it should be. He's had Bronco Radovich hanging over him for uh, four quarters now. Big Davidson inside to Keith Furphy. Furphy. That could be a new Richfield Coliseum record as he puts it up into the second deck. <laughs> and the fans of Cleveland, a little over 6,000 here today, giving him a standing ovation, many of them. <laughs> Obviously not the first time he's done that. They're calling for the tape measure. They want to get an official count on that. I don't know what the sense of that kick was. I mean, <laughs> he had a lot of time, a lot of opportunity to pass it off, but uh, I guess when you get two goals, you're shooting for three. And again, a lot of hellos to the Memphis Americans fans watching this live on TV5 in the Mid-South area. Wyatt Osceola. Jackson, Tennessee, and Jackson, Mississippi. Tupelo. Fans coming from all over the Mid-South to enjoy American soccer. We've got about another month to go. There's Steve Long against Michael Kaham. Michael Garrett, see how youthful he looks. Keith Furphy. Inside, Matt O'Sullivan, the diving tackle. Mix it away. Nice pass on the far side. There's Holtenbein. Holtenbein in front. Steve Long making the run. The curvature, Chris, in the boards, each Coliseum has their own bounce characteristics, also has its own angulation, and it makes it difficult for a visiting team to know right where to put it on the boards to get the right kind of response. Well, you can see that here with Cleveland. They know exactly where to hit the ball off the board. It's like in hockey, teams will use the boards very effectively. They know how to bounce it beyond the, beyond the goal and get it back. Nice clearance by Richard Boot. Matt O'Sullivan. Gets the ball to Mike Garrett. A little bit more skillful Garrett to quarterback this American's attack. Garrett turns. Keeps it. The shot by Holtenbein. And nice play by Bruce Rudolph as he put a lot of pressure on Vic Davidson. Davidson had the first opportunity to get the ball. Pass inside, stolen by Rodriguez. And now a nice pass on the far side. Keith Murphy finds Tahom open. 5.46 left. Big side. Get behind the American defense. Heel clearance by Richard Boot. The American zone defense got caught that time. Rodriguez again. He winds. He shoots. Another block by Rudruff. That's three or four today. 
Far side, here comes Keith Forpe. He's gonna have to go to his left foot. He does the shot, deflection, and Richard Boot, fortunately, was there already on the ground. Could have been real trouble. Pass now up to Steve Long. Steve Long to Holtenbein. Holtenbein, far side to Dudek. Try to get the number one line back on the field. Dudek to Long. Long loses the ball, miss pass. And now Long will go off the field. Stomekovic back on for the Americans. So at, at this point in the game, Kyle, the Americans are looking a bit tired. Uh, as a coach, I think this would be a good time to start getting some fresh legs in the game, start putting pressure on uh, Cleveland, because at this point, there's no pressure being put on Cleveland whatsoever by the Americans. They're falling off them, giving Cleveland room to work, and uh, that's why they scored 7-4. We're, we're not on top of the game. We've got to get on top of them right now, and the only way we can do that is by pressure, and that can be done by some fresh legs. The shot. Kunovats, Kunovats had the opportunity to go in a little bit further before he took the shot, but perhaps with that tiring situation, the Americans basically with two lines. They do have a new player recently signed on the who still has his warm-up jacket on, so it doesn't appear he'll be getting any action. Great save by Richard Boot. Corner kick now for Cleveland. But tell us a little bit about Michael Falls. Well, Mike Falls from the University of Tampa, originally drafted in the second round by the Americans and also by the uh, Tampa Bay Rowdies. Here's a save. Again, Michael Fall with the best angle as he is field level. Taking a look at that. Great save by Richard Boot. Oh, almost a heel kick. And looks like Stan Stamekovic had his foot stepped on. Against Demekovic with three knee surgeries on one knee. Now down on the field. Soccer action does not stop until the Americans get the ball and he's holding the back of his calf. Could be a cramp. And if it is a cramp, they need to push that toe up towards his knee. He seems to be in a bit of pain. I don't know. Well, that does give us a chance as we're watching Stan to once again remind you Tuesday night the Americans play Buffalo. And Bronco Radovich there doing a little bit of translating <laughs> for Stan as he tries to tell Frank Bunnell what's really going on. Also, once again, there are about five or six spots left in the soccer showcase that world record attempt by the Americans in conjunction with the amateur soccer community in Memphis in the Mid-South. We've got teams coming in as far as Louisville, Kentucky, and I believe also Jackson, Mississippi to participate in that. So if you'd like to get information on uh, how you can get a nice certificate that can be suitably framed for your wall or office, call the Americans and take part in this world record attempt. Now looking to the bench, we just finished talking about Mike Fall, and he's, seen, he's got his warm-up jacket off. He's uh, trying to get a little warm-up in on the bench, which is difficult, very difficult for a player in indoor soccer to come into a game in the fourth quarter and be very effective. Uh, it takes you time to get into the game, to get a little sweat broken, and uh, to just come in right off the bench cold like that is difficult. But Mike Falls kind of kid. He's looking for an opportunity, and he's going to make the best of it today. Took a look at the bench, saw Dave Johnson, the Americans' assistant coach, and wanted to say hello to his wife, uh, Sue, and her daughter, Sarah and Heather, watching the game along with many people from their living rooms in the Mid-South. The Americans are live on TV 5, 345 left. It's the Americans 4, Cleveland 7. Cleveland, the second best team in the major indoor soccer league. And Ray Kunovats, Rodriguez with the nice tackle. Things going to get a little bit more physical now as the Americans have got to do something, as Chris Bartels has said, to change the pacing of the game. Oscar be getting ready to take no prisoners on Kunovats, forced an early pass. And the Americans almost have to match up, it seems to me, Chris, man against man to force the kind of pressure that we're talking about. Well, that, that, you can't play as often get any sort of pressure. Zone just gives the other team a lot of room to work with. And they can, they can take that time and kill it. And with only uh, two minutes and 56 seconds, we can't afford that. So as Nietzsche tries to get the pass into Michael Garrett. Garrett is going off the ball. There's Radovich, dumps it in to the crowd. And Michael Garrett wanting a two-minute delay of game penalty. 
but does not get it. Now here we go, Mike Fall. First MISL action in his career. What do you think's going through his mind? He, he's thinking scoring. He said, <laughs> he is. Very confident young man. He said, hey, when I get into play, I'll score a goal. Well, he's got a little over two minutes to do that. And he is a very talented, I guess you'd call him an attacking midfielder. Not many of those who are born American anyway. Well, he's a, he's a good young player. Watching him in trials, I was very impressed. On the first day when he stepped on the field, he was ready to take control. And he attacks well, he shoots well with both feet, and he's a good defensive player, too. He comes in to tackle to win the ball. Well, Stan Stamikovich on the bench uh, has been quoted as saying, of course, we hate to see anybody get hurt, but uh, he is not himself on the road. He had one great game against Pittsburgh last weekend or the weekend before. But uh, he says that the fans of Memphis turn him from an average player into the magician. And uh, so he loves to see the big crowds, and he is one of the first players to ask the front office staff, what kind of crowd are we going to have? And you can play a big role in Stan's success and the Americans in coming out and supporting the team. We've got a lot of games coming up here at the end of March and the rest of April. And I believe the majority of those, Chris, being at home, so the Americans do have a good shot at getting in the playoffs, but they're going to have to get on another winning streak. The Americans have won three games in a row. As Matt O'Sullivan now, a normal defender finding himself up in the attacking zone. Mike Fall does something. Able to steal the ball. Mike to back, back to Mike. Garrett. Garrett's got it. O'Sullivan in the box. There's Michael Fall. Garrett to O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan with the shot. Mike Fall inside. A lot of pressure being put on by the Americans as Bruce Rudruff. Bruce Rudolph's unbelievable. He can, he can undress you in about two seconds. He's so consistent. There's a nice pass inside. Very good one-two play by the Americans. The American-Americans. It's an all-American field. Team on this second line now. Steve Allison from Wheaton College. Steve Long. Steve Long, excuse me, from Wheaton College. <laughs> Matt O'Sullivan from California State University. Michael Fall from Tampa. And Bruce Rudolph, St. Louis University. Michael Garrett from George Mason. It's an all-American lineup for the Americans. There's the shot. Mike Falls first is blocked by Cleveland. 102 left. Richard Boot coming out. Michael Garrett. Mike Fall. Gets the pass in. Puts the ball between the legs of Michael Kaham, and Kaham on the obstruction holding now. Have a free kick. Steve Allison is the player who is from the University of Pennsylvania Work School of Business. That's right. And who's not seen much action, if any, this second half. There he is again, Bruce Rudruff. Got two Michaels and a Steve going against the Cleveland Force with 32 seconds left. Kaham takes Mike Fall down. One of the best falls he's had. And Chris Vaccaro, as they crank up the music here, it's obvious the final score is going to be in the Cleveland Force's favor. As Kaham goes down the field, and it's Cleveland three against two. 13 seconds left. Now it's the Americans two against one. How quickly things change. They're going to have to hurry. Steve Long. Shot inside, Michael Garrett, the ball going just behind him. And that's it. From Richfield Coliseum. Unfortunately for the Americans, trying to make it four in a row for Cleveland, they've now won eight of their last 11. And for Cleveland, another notch up as they try to catch Baltimore in the Eastern Division. For Memphis, a temporary roadblock as they try to catch Buffalo and New York to garner a playoff position in the East. We'll be back with the final wrap-up right after this. Back at Richfield Coliseum, 
post-game show with Chris Bartels and Kyle Rowe Jr. And Chris, uh, the Americans got to a point at one time where uh, they were behind 5-4. to four. They had a good chance to come back with two consecutive goals. But Cleveland, as you said, very deep with more than two lines worth of forwards anyway. And with all those top scorers, made it difficult on the team. Well, it is difficult, especially in the fourth quarter when you give up a goal right off the bat. Uh, the most important time for a team is the end of a quarter and the beginning of the quarter. That's where you sort of dictate the pace of the game to the other team. And unfortunately, we let them dictate to us. And uh, they were just able to close us down for the remaining 15 minutes, and they deserved a 7-4 win. They did a good job. Just a reminder, the Americans return to the Mid-South Coliseum coming up Tuesday when the Americans host the Buffalo Stallions. And then Friday night, the Americans against the New York Arrows, the four-time champions of the major indoor soccer league. That coming up this week in Memphis. Uh, be sure to come out and see.